Hello and welcome to Use the Types episode 0. In this first episode we're going to install Haskell Stack on a clean machine. And in case you were wondering what Stack is, it's the Haskell build tool I'm going to use to build all the projects in these videos and is a prerequisite for all the following episodes. Here we have Ubuntu 18.04 desktop and this is more or less the base install with the addition of my favorite web browser and all the latest updates applied. First we'll open up the web browser and we will visit the Haskell Stack website which is at haskellstack.org You'll see that it lists two methods for installing this tool on Unix-like operating systems. If you scroll down a little bit, there's a curl command line and a wget command line. For now we're going to use the wget variant. So the two tools described, wget and curl, wget is the one that's most likely to be available on a clean Ubuntu installation, but the two are equivalent. I'm going to copy the command line, open a terminal, paste the command line in to get started, press enter. This command needs to run as root using sudo, so it's at this point we'll need to enter a password and then we'll see what happens after that. Great, I'll maximize the terminal. So we can see the install script for Haskell starts installing a bunch of prerequisites like G++ and a C and C++ compiler and many, many other things. This is a fascinating viewing. It usually doesn't take that long. Okay, and we're all done. So let's check out the message here. It says the stack command program has been installed to user local bin stack. And it's warning us that this directory, dot local bin under your home directory, is not on your path. We're going to add this to the path and create it. So this is the location where stack will install binaries, you know, program outputs and things like that. So first we will create that directory. Dollar home local bin. There you go. Just so you can see home on this machine is home use the types. And then we are going to go and add that path to the end of your bash profile. So something like echo export path equals dollar home slash dot local slash bin colon dollar path and append at the end of your bash rc file like that. If you look at path now, it doesn't have that at the beginning yet, but if we close the terminal down and open a new one, all being well, there we, there we go. Home use the types local bin is now at the beginning of your path, which is great for when stack installs binaries. Next thing to check after that is the version of stack we have available to us. Let's see what we have. Stack minus minus version 1.7.1. That's a good version. This is the version that we'll be assuming for all future videos. Now let's test that everything's working correctly. We're in our home directory at this point. I'm going to create an SRC directory for source files and projects. You may already have one. Feel free to reuse that. We'll go into the SRC directory. And I'm going to create a new project, which is a very basic, simple Haskell console application with the stack new command. We'll call it hello world. We're going to use the simple project template. And we're going to use the 12.0 resolver for the time being. In future videos, I'll talk more about these different options here. But this is a good starting point, a fairly recent resolver using a fairly recent version of GHC, the Glasgow Haskell compiler. There we go, it's downloading the build plan. It's giving you a warning here about 
default options in your config.yaml file in your .stack directory, which probably doesn't exist at this point. At some point, we will populate that file. In fact, what we'll do is, as soon as we have the Hello World project set up, we will take a look at that file. Make a note of that for later. You may be wondering what exactly Stack is doing at this point. Well, it's downloading an index of all the packages that are in that LTS 12.0 snapshot. And we're going to create a project, and once we build it, of course, it will need to download a compiler. Because at this point in time, this is a clean machine. We have no Glasgow Haskell compiler at all. Stack will take care of installing that for us. There we go. Let's see what we have in our directory. We just have the hello world subdirectory. Let's go into that directory. And what do we have? We have a bunch of files. Cabal file, license, readme, setup.hs, source, stack.yaml. And in the source directory, there will be in main.hs, which we can take a quick look at, cat source slash main.hs, which is pretty much the most basic Haskell program you can imagine. What we could also do at this point is if you wanted to start iterating on this, turning it into a project that you might put up on GitHub or GitLab or what have you, you could do a git init here. That creates the dot git directory, of course. And stack projects typically will create all the build artifacts in a dot stack dash work subdirectory within the project directory. So we're going to ignore that by adding it to the dot git ignore file, which we'll create from scratch. So we can say echo slash dot stack dash works slash append to dot git ignore. So now we have a one line git ignore file. If you get status, we'll see it is showing us a bunch of new files. Let's build it, see what happens. So I'm gonna use stack build. Now, as I said before, this is a clean Ubuntu installation. There is no system-wide GHC compiler installed. So stack will take care of downloading a GHC for us. And it's 8.4.3, which is the version of GHC that accompanies LTS 12.0. So that's what, 144 meg download. We'll sit here for a while, let it do that, download it, then unpack it. Okay, um, it's now compiling our program. Compiling. And you'll see it's installed the output, an executable named hello-world in this location, which as you see is under the .stack-work directory that we added to our git ignore file. So if you do git status again, you'll see it hasn't, you'll see that git is not, is not tracking any of the binary outputs, even though there is a dot stack dash work directory there now. Okay, so you are free to type in that full path, like so, and then tag the name of the executable on the end and run it like that. There you go. Hello world. That's a little bit cumbersome. So stack offers the exec command used to execute targets. And our program is named hello-world. So the shortcut for that would be stack exec hello-world with exactly the same output. And just to show you again the contents of main.hs, put strlun hello world, which is exactly what we see in the output here. And that is it, pretty much. Now, I did say we were going to take a quick look at that config.yaml file. I don't know if it's created the stack directory. Yes, it has, because of course it's where all the snapshots would go. And it's created a default config.yaml, which is this file here. This is a file that contains default non-project specific settings. Things like your author name, author email, copyright. These are strings that are used to pre-populate certain files that stack will generate for you from templates. So we'll go back to the contents of the directory. We see hello-world.cabal, and we'll look at the contents of that file. And we'll see it's got 
GitHub user as your GitHub username and your author name here and your email address and all of that stuff. You can go and fix those values here in your .stack config yaml file in order to have stack use those as default values for new projects. In fact, let's go and do that, shall we? wrong directory. I don't have Vim install yet. That's just how clean this machine is. Do I have a nano? Yes, I do. Excellent. So we'll delete the, the hash signs, which are the common characters. This is a YAML file. I'm going to put my name in, Richard Cook, and my email, richard at usethetypes.com. Copyright cook and my github username is rcook. There we go, we save it and we go back and create a new project and show you that, that affects the contents of the generated cabal file. So stack new hello dash world 2 simple resolver equals lts 12.0 and we're going to hello world 2 And that's the contents of the Cabal file. It's got my GitHub username in it, my name, my email address. Thank you for watching.